Well, we spent a lot of time uh, in the last couple of years talking about China. Well, in recent years, the Chinese Communist Party has been drawing unwanted attention for rounding up as many as three million Uyghurs and putting them in so-called re-education camps that are really concentration camps with high-tech security. But of course, Chinese re-education camps have been around for a while. In fact, my next guest was born in one in the throes of Mao Zedong's cultural revolution. Thankfully, he was able to survive and eventually make his way to the United States, where he became the first Uyghur to earn an American law degree. And he tells his personal story in his just-released book, No, no Escape. He joins me now in studio. He made it here to share his powerful story. Nuri Turkel is a Uyghur human rights advocate. He is the chairman of the board for the Uyghur Human Rights Project, which he co-founded in 2003. He has also served alongside me as vice chair of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. Nuri, good to have you in studio. Thank you so much, Tony. Glad nice you, to be uh, here. Glad you made it. Thank you. Thank you. Let, let me, we don't have a lot of time, so I want to jump into this, uh, but, but kind of the personal side, because you've been on the program before, we've talked about Uyghurs and what's happening here, but your mother was first arrested when she was about six months pregnant, and she was at the age of 19. Right. Tell us about your time uh, of childhood and, and, and how this has impacted you. You know, my uh, passion for advocating uh, human rights, religious freedom started when I was even before born into this world. Uh, the way that I was born um, in the captivity uh, in re-education camp at, during the height of Cultural Revolution shaped my worldview, not only to advocate um, for those who share the same cultural and religious background, but also those who are experiencing similar uh, repression, persecution, because of what they practice, um, in their private lives, in their spirituality, way of life, belief, um, and adherence to uh, liberty, uh, right. human freedom. So um, my mother's uh, influence in me uh, throughout my childhood was profound. Um, I learned uh, how to appreciate life and other people from my mother. And my intellectual source of inspiration uh, had been my father, who recently passed away. So my life, uh, being born in a re-education camp, and now fighting along, alongside you against the modern-day concentration camps, uh, is one of the many untold stories that the world should know about. I wrote this book to uh, accomplish uh, three basic goals. One, to tell stories, um, tell my own stories and that of others' story. And then two, uh, expose uh, the true nature of this communist regime in Beijing that has been so brutal against uh, religious practitioners, uh, Catholics, uh, Buddhists, uh, Tibetans, and Muslim Uyghurs. And then three, I want to make it relatable to general public that it's no longer just another human rights atrocities, human rights abuse. This is about who we are as a civilization, who we are as a free people, and who we are as a people um, who defends, uh, protects uh, liberty, uh, democratic freedom around the world. Yeah, out today, No Escape by Nuri Turkel. Where can folks get a copy? Uh, they can go to HarperCollins' website or their favorite online bookstores like Amazon to purchase their copy. And I know you, you wanted me to do the audio version, but uh, too many Chinese names in here, and I struggle with the Chinese names. <laughs> you have a beautiful voice, Tony. I'll be honored if you did the audio for me. Let's talk. I, I know you and I have talked about your father who recently passed away, and, and both your mother and father were not able to come to the United States. They're still, your mother's still in China. Your father, that's where he passed away. How did you get to the United States? I was fortunate. Um, I was one of the few fortunate uh, Uyghurs who managed to get a passport and a U.S. visa to come to this wonderful country uh, about 27, 8 years ago. I came here as a student uh, to pursue graduate education. And after tasting freedom in the United States, I become an advocate. I, I spent literally two decades. And, and you're, the you're the Chinese Communist Party's worst nightmare. I mean, <laughs> they don't like you. So are you, Tony? Well, I know. I know. We, were, uh, we, were, uh, we were sanctioned for right. us promoting. But I mean, but you, you really know what's going on there, and you tell those stories. Unfortunately, I lived all, through, all yeah. of it um, in the last five decades. So uh, they can't say you're making it up. No, I can, they cannot. They cannot look me in the eye that's uh, saying that they are making up anything. I lived through everything, of uh, every repressive uh, policy implementations, uh, starting from the re-education to today's industrial skill concentration camps that I'm fighting to uh, shut down. So did the Trump administration, when they started taking a harder line with China, is that helping? Did that help? 
Um, the President Trump and his team uh, did something remarkable in the United States and on our public discourse to normalize calling the Chinese regime out. Before that, it was almost taboo that business leaders, uh, academics, uh, scholars in the various think tank told American people repeatedly that we need this country for its cheap products. We need this country in global um, uh, regional issues, climate change, uh, counterterrorism. And guess what? They're not only not failing to uh, fulfill that obligation as an international player, but now today uh, Xi Jinping's China is helping Putin and uh, right. in the, in the ongoing um, war in Ukraine. So, so, so this regime is something that the international community must uh, pay close attention to. This is, uh, this is the regime is not going to go anywhere as long as the Communist Party uh, rules this country. Is there a hope that if you see Western civilization stand up for human rights, religious freedom, as you and I have on the commission, as there are some in the State Department doing not as strong this administration as the last, is there a chance that we could see a fissure, a break there in China that could open up freedom to the to the Chinese I, people? Because the Chinese people are for us. They're, they're with us. They I, want freedom. Absolutely. I am a, I'm an optimist by nature. Uh, when I started this struggle, the current struggle, uh, three, four years ago, I, frankly speaking, never thought that we would have a bipartisan support, President Trump signing the first Uyghur bill that you supported and President Trump's administration uh, calling it genocide, as my co-commissioners, uh, including Yosef, signed a letter to actually right. ask for that determination. And also the same policy has been continued today. Right. Right. And both presidents signed two pieces of legislation. And also the both presidents, uh, both administrations, have imposed more than 100 punitive sanctions against the Chinese entities, including all of the brand name technology firms that developed, as you're aware, through our hearings, that uh, developed a, a most intrusive, pervasive uh, uh, technology, surveillance techniques, not only utilizing against their own people, but now spreading around the world. That is a threat to Western civilization. That is a threat to religious yeah. freedom. That is a threat to um, a civilization, if you will. And we have to continue to build this global effort to stand in, in the United States. The United States has to lead the way. Nuri, unfortunately, we're out of time. I'd love to sit and talk with you even more because... Uh, the book, Telling These Stories, it is, uh, is riveting. And, of course, uh, having worked alongside you and knowing your passion for religious freedom, uh, I encourage people to pick up a copy, No Escape by Nuri Turkel. Uh, Nuri, always great to see you. And, by the way, here's your own stand mug. I want you to take that with you because you're standing for religious freedom. Thank you, Tony. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for lending your voice. You started uh, educating American public way back even before we met.